bounce his head on the table ten times or something. Don't, don't you ever do this. Bachi Bachi Book Club. Gentlemen, those who lie betwixt or outside, I am your host, the Brian Lloyd Danielson of Buying Roids and Sandwiches, as always, Squill, joined by my faithful companion, Walk, and a That's right, brother. Oh, this sorry. time, the youngest man in England, coming off of a Herculean effort of editing my most recent video, it's Sam. I'm... Back, baby! <laughs> yeah! Oh, it's good to be back at the book club, guys. Uh, very, thank you so much. And, and, and an episode and a half, right. uh, to, to be on as well. So I'm very glad to be back. And uh, yeah, you're right, Squill. That was, that, that was a hell of a task. But you know what? I enjoyed every second of editing that video for you. <laughs> like, I can only, I can only imagine just... The, like specifically the 3D dragon graphic was just frying everything. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, lit- <laughs> that literally was it. It was the flames and the dragon that was kind of well no, took almost part almost all of Southeast London out. <laughs> oh god, I didn't even know you had electricity over there. <laughs> yeah, because we're still powered by coal oh. <laughs> <laughs> and steam. Well, you know, steam. it was still it was you still in the 19th century, out. bruv. <laughs> bruv, in it. Oh god. So our topic today is someone near and close to all of our hearts, none other than Boz Rutan. Yay! And of course, he is beloved in the field of MMA for going on to become the ping of, king of Pancrase. Uh, UFC heavyweight champion, um, but he also had a very brief, but I would say a very good run uh, in pro res in the late 90s and early 2000s in pro wrestling, and he was quite good. Um, but both of you, why don't you say what you, I mean, Sam, I know you know a lot about Boz Root, so we'll go walk first. What did you think about Boz Root and going into this? Um, I knew that Boz Root was bald. I knew mm-hmm. Boss Rudin was, um, <laughs> he, he made the funny instructional video. Yeah. Um, I know Boss Rudin is the goat of pride commentary. Oh, um, yeah. I knew that he oh, used a bunch of open palm strikes and he has extra flexible wrists, quoting Joe Rogan. Um, that allowed him to punch people with his palm even though that's what everybody does when they do an open palm strike, but whatever, Joe. Um, <laughs> aside from that, not much. I, I Oh, I do know that uh, Minoru Suzuki helped him get good at grappling and not just pull a ghillie every three seconds. Yeah, Suzuki and Funaki, mm-hmm. who um, in some of his Pancrase fights later on, um, Funaki is in the corner, and it, it's a he's speaking to Boz in English, so it's a Japanese guy talking to a cornering a Dutch guy in English, which is both of their second languages, and he's going like reverse hold, reverse hold, uh, which is pretty great. That's pretty um, awesome. So Sam, you have a similar fixation on Pancras that I do. Why don't you talk a little about that? Oh yeah. So I I would say it started at least fifteen or so years ago when I discovered through YouTube more and more uh, shoot-style wrestling. And, of course, it gravitated immediately to Pancrase. And uh, my love for Buzz Rutten was already there, purely from Pride Commentary, as well as his uh, amazing appearance in GTA 4. He's in GTA 4? He was in GTA 4. He was uh, was in one of the TV shows, as well as the mocap uh, the mocap fight actor for Nico Belli. That's awesome. I didn't know that. That's sweet the, as fuck. The more you know. I also found out as well, like every other 
handsome Dutch person that there is. He uh, and every fighter as well in the in early to mid nineties. He was also a model, and uh, uh, this is the thing <laughs> I wanted to show you two is oh. one of the most amazing modeling shots I think I've ever seen uh, of the side profile oh of Boss Rudin. Give me Chad Boss Rudin. Holy it shit! Is cursed though. It is <laughs> cursed, but I, I, he's kind of like a uh, he's sculpted out of uh, out of marble. Mm hmm. Darn right he is. But no, I discovered... Uh, yes, so, I was going to say, it makes it makes two people with modeling contracts in Pant Crace, which isn't a lot, but weirdly yeah. there's two. <laughs> it really is. But no, yeah, it was through YouTube that I discovered Bars Rutan's... Uh, there was a compilation of Bars Rutan knockouts, and through that, uh, just discovered more and more Pant Crace, like guys like Funaki, Suzuki, Shamrock... Um, and then, of course, Buzz Rutan, the legend that he is on his own YouTube channel, released uh, every single Pancrase match that he had with his own commentary, uh, which is just the most amazing thing ever. Just w hearing Buzz watching Buzz is, uh, is, is, a, is a treat, if you ask me. <laughs> Look at how handsome Suzuki is. He's so handsome. <laughs> He, he's My so favorite young. Is the, the professionalism of just like he had to commentate the pride fights and pretend like he didn't know what's happening yeah. um, be, yes. uh, ahead of time. When he's doing the uh, commentating on his YouTube channel, he'll be like, I think he's about to go for X. And I'm like, Boz, I know you know you're in the fight. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> the trenches, <laughs> brother. Well, th there he goes. There goes the liver shot. <laughs> <laughs> Classic me. But yes, I subjected Walk to some of those uh, in addition to the actual wrestling matches because they just are a treat. They are a treat. I, I was a big fan of Boz. Uh, there was this one match where a dude looked like he was wearing one of his boyfriend's shirts. Yes, that is his, uh, that is his pride, de or uh, pride, his Pancrase debut. Yeah, it's his pretty pan fun. The Pancrase debut of the pink shorts that are barely being held up with and, and, and kick pads being held up with gaffer tape. I love and it. I believe the I believe the shorts were made by his wife. Yes, Which presumably they were. they were sweatpants and she pulled out some scissors and cut it up to make them shorts. I think it was the Pancrase uh, the committee that told him, look, we'll give you the money. Can you just please buy proper gear? <laughs> something uh something i do find really adorable about pancrase is the amount of cooperation where these guys are like training to fight each other but they are helping each other because there's yeah. that weird pro wrestling ethic of wanting to put on a show it's just deeply funny to me mm -hmm. <laughs> the true the true essence of shoot style if you ask me it's kind of fun. It's like going to your. Lo it's like seeing shows of your local gym, and all the guys are just basically rolling with each other, but they are beating the shit out of each other. Now, you know? I, to cover the matches here, I'm actually want to go in chronological order rather than the order we initially watched them. So, what? yeah, <laughs> well, because I think it's interesting to do this of um, work with his literally his second match ever, which is. Battle Arts at oh, okay. Yuki Bombaye versus Carl Malenko. Okay. Yes. I can I can I can do that. Uh, as a, as we go into this, I just want to say that there are well sorry, he's billed as Carl Greco here. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl. Yeah. Um I think it's hilarious how many goddamn Malenkos there are. Uh, like Twelve, just, right? They're yes, like... too many. <laughs> they're like the uh, the dwarves in Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, exactly. The, they're the Kardashians of professional wrestling. <laughs> Sleepy well, Malenko. Well, I just find it funny that for whatever reason, Jewish guy who really likes catch wrestling is just like a niche that they needed to fill in Japan. <laughs> yeah. And Carl Malenko, uh, before we really get into this, though, he's just a really good seller. Um Oh, for that, true. I was really <laughs> impressed by this. I, now, <laughs> now, I would argue that he's not really selling, selling? and he is just getting kicked really <laughs> was, hard in the head. I but... was going to say, <laughs> that first roundhouse, I think about a minute and 30 into this match, that's not Carl Malenko selling. That's him going, oh, fuck, I just got hit yeah. with a buzz root roundhouse. But I don't think his brain is big enough, so I don't think he was ever going to get knocked out by a, a boss root and roundhouse kick to the head. 
he needed a different off button. But, <laughs> you know, we'll get into that. All, All right. right. Who wants to start with this? I'll start. <clears throat> so this is a duel of the white boys here in Bachi Bachi. Um, <laughs> so I want to describe, as I am one to do, describe each other's outfits. Um, so my man Boss Rutten is wearing his usual pro wrestling gear, which is white and red with the red kick pads. Um, no writing on the hands, which is kind of strange. And then there is Carl Greco, who kind of looks like if Ken Shamrock and a Malenko was put inside of the teleporter from the fly. <laughs> um, and yeah, so both men are begin feeling each other out with a couple kicks and punches. And uh, Boss immediately kicks Carl right in the jaw, allowing him to do his, quote, excellent selling. Yeah. Exactly. It's great. Selling. It's great selling. <laughs> it's, great, it's great bocce bocce selling. Ah, there you go. Um so uh they get to the floor eventually, uh, and boss starts throwing some strikes, uh probably to the liver if I recall correctly. Uh and then they lock in a sweet leg bar. Um that's the thing that exists. The deadly uh, leg bar. The deadly leg bar. My favorite technique uh, <laughs> from catch. Uh, and then uh, Boss has is very uh, l he's very full of liberties. This match where he just starts <laughs> punching poor Carl directly into his kidneys. Presumably he peed crazy blood after this, but um, yeah. just throwing knees and like elbows just brutally um and then i think eventually they roll around a little bit more and then boss starts doing 12 to 6 uh, uh elbows into carl's sternum mm. yeah so something i wanted to talk about is um ground and pound and then also the guard work here which is really interesting Mm -hmm. um, because no one in Sam knows this firsthand. No one in Pancrase knows what a guard is. Sometimes <laughs> they will put the legs up, like as yeah. if like they they sort of are trying to block it. Because as I understand it, within catch wrestling, um, I think they call it like a uh, like a uh, scissor hold or whatever to have the guard. Um, but the idea of a sweep or anything defensive other than just trying to get back up is not there. So it's really funny that Carl keeps trying to defend himself with it. And then the, the ground and pound is disgusting. Yeah, it's, yes. most, it, it's just boss beating the fuck out of dog. It's it's brutal. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, and, yeah and, Sam, do you want to go ahead? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell from this match that this is Baz's very first singles match mm -hmm. <laughs> he's taking so I many you liberties could you, in the <laughs> sense as well that you could tell that he was told to hot to, to pull back but i think mm -hmm. just the moment being in the moment and the adrenaline kind of made him forget at moments that he had to pull his punches and kicks <laughs> he's so mean he um, is really like he Bullies Carl Malenko <laughs> Carl, sometimes. Carl thought he was in a work. He was fighting for his life in the trenches against this dude who is known for killing people with kicks. But I and also I think it speaks to, the, to just the um I guess the prodigious talent of Boz because my operating theory is that if he had wanted to and if his health had stayed, he in the early two thousands he could have been a massive star in uh in wrestling if he wanted to after MMA. Mm -hmm. Um, but mm -hmm. like when um, Carl Malenko throws up what I can only describe as an alleged triangle attempt. And then oh, you mean the double arm the, triangle? Yes, yes. And then goes for the double arm bar, and Boz is selling the fuck out of that. So yeah, there is a bit yeah. of a, a, as Walk says, like a, a Vader ethic of like, I'll sell you, you sell me, we both hit each other really hard. Yes. I Boz like that. Because immediately knows how to sell uh, limbs really well. Yes. Which... He's ter he is terrific at selling limbs. Yeah, he does a great job. Um, yeah. And so uh, later on, once um, once they get into uh, he gets into mount. Um, 
Carl, that is, and he goes mm-hmm. for the arm bar once again. I, it's and part of that's just being shoot put into an arm bar in training so many times. But I don't know, just something about the way Boz sells the arm that I really enjoy. Um, and probably because you know one of his arms is actually atrophying as yes. we speak as this match yes. is going. Um, but I don't know, he's just. You don't normally see someone immediately such a good seller, and I find it really interesting. Yeah, for sh- yeah, for sure, especially on submissions. I think that's. Except- I think most like pro wrestlers are slow on submission selling because most of them, I would assume, have not done like a ton of like MMA, or like submission grappling work, and most of their mm-hmm. bases is like. Footballs are being done yeah. in football. <laughs> Maybe old school, like the 1920s, but you know, yeah. <laughs> you could shoot a guy in the in the middle of the game and nobody would care. Uh, another spot I really like because it's sort of funny to me, but um, Boz throws up a triangle attempt. Um, oh, and he's trying. He's visibly because of the kick pads. He's uh, he's having trouble, uh, like fully uh pulling it down and this is something i wanted to talk to sam about um the idea of pulling submissions that don't work in kick pads in pan craze which is really <laughs> funny yes it's just something kind of there's there's just the uh, amazing sort of charm to seeing submission attempts in pan craze and then realizing that I, we've got these clunky kick pads in the way shit <laughs> <laughs> But they'll still when, attempt it. They'll still style. do it. Especially when someone's going for, like... Because theoretically, with, like, a heel hook or a knee bar, you could still probably get it in. But what's hilarious to me is with the toe hold, and they're, like, trying to crank it, but they've only sort of got, like, the lip of the of the kick pad. I'm like, what yes. are you doing? <laughs> the tip and the this toes. doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing? <laughs> Oh, but yeah. I do find it. I do find it interesting here that clearly, um, ring style. Carl Malenko does know what a guard is, which is very interesting to me. Mm. Which is very much. I want to point out how not normal that is at this time. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think they knew what a guard was, presumably. <laughs> and then, do you guys want to talk about the finishing stretch? Because I do very much enjoy this. Oh, for sure. Um, Ooh, yeah. I have it written down. Um, let's see. We got a mean head kick, which rocks. <laughs> um and then boss is pummeling carl's liver like it owes him money on the mat and then he tries to go for a gilly a which is pretty gilly. sweet a mounted yes. gilly um and then boss soccer kicks carl's liver and then punches and kicks carl to the ground um and then eventually i think it's like a kick to the head that knocks out carl for a little bit mm-hmm. uh and then he gets back up and then uh, he like go is in the corner, and he walks out a little bit, and then Boss Room just c- demolishes poor Carl's liver by just kicking it so hard that it it might be one of the most brutal bocce bocce shots I've ever seen. Because <laughs> yes. it is just an, a a a shoot just kick to the liver, and uh, Carl immediately gets turned off. Yeah, as it as it happens. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Sam, you have any notes on Carl Malenko? Car- that's not his name. Carl Greco getting murdered? Other than that, I think he was rather relieved that the match ended. Because I don't know if it was about, if you saw it, chaps. It seemed like he was a bit, he seemed a bit apprehensive to kind of do anything too crazy in the match. Uh, 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 well, in order to not make Buzz upset and probably kill him further. Yes. <laughs> I mean, like, when I'm going up against a guy that, I, if I if I remember correctly, this guy has already been a UFC champion. Yes. Yes. So, like, I would be worried, too, if a guy that has had barely any pro wrestling training and I'm in the ring with a dude that absolutely could murder me. So if I make, like, one too stiff of a moment, he will just, like, drill his kick directly into my like ear and then murder yeah. me style and, and um, to Boz's credit i don't think there's anything malicious about this performance i think not. he is genuinely just trying to put on a show absolutely it's like blaming a bear for 
like trying to go for a hug and he crushes somebody to death. You know? I do. Strong. I will say, despite the fear, I just want to give credit because Carl Greco does does put on a his best while being in mortal terror. Oh, yes. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely agree. And uh, even, I'm... like, the, the finishing sequence comes off as fairly realistic of the way that he's rocked and he goes for, like, a desperation double leg before the, the knee of death comes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But overall, I think it's a pretty fun match, especially for his very first singles match, as we said. Yeah, he does a good job. Awesome so job. now we move on to a year later. And we're going from first singles match to challenging for the IWGP heavyweight title versus <laughs> Yuji Nagata, the topic of our previous episode. My friend, your friend, Sam's friend, question mark. <laughs> Yuji Nagata. <laughs> Yuji yes. Nagata, baby. Absolutely. All right. Um, let's start off with the ring entrances. Boss Rudin <laughs> comes out wearing peppermint style uh, ring gear. Uh, and he's doing maybe one of my favorite ring entrances of, like, this series, where he's, like, walking down the ramp and then tossing what I assume is autographed pictures of himself yeah, to the crowd. It surely has it's, to be. It has to be. Um, and he's just walking towards the ring, uh, and he gets in there. And then Yuji Nagata comes out wearing a white robe, which I haven't seen him do before. Um, and they get into the ring. Boss Rutten is stretching out his palms, uh, to power up his palm strikes, presumably. Uh, and then the match kicks off with, uh, some sweet off, uh, Nagata tries to go on the offense immediately with a kick, but that gets checked, uh, clearly just trying to, like, test what each, each other can do. Mm -hmm. Um... Boss and Nagata lock up a bit, and as the exchange goes on, they begin to roll around, showing that clearly neither man is confident on the mat. Um, yeah, and then eventually Boss gets into a position where he can begin raining some strikes in. A couple 12 to 6 elbows to the sternum, and a couple palm strikes to the kidneys, as he is one to do. Um, I think he was hitting Nagata less powerfully than he was yeah. hitting poor yes, Carl. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I think I think he's a little less uh, brutal. I'll say. I would definitely say this is the mark of a man who has used that year wisely um, in yes. trying to be less outright murderous in pro wrestling. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um. And then, let's see. They stand back up, going blow for blow with kicks until Nagata gets palm striked in the ear, causing him to bump to the floor. Oof. Uh, woof. That looked like it sucked. Um, then Boss doesn't let up, going for kicks to the head, uh, which leads him to get nearly getting choked out by uh, <laughs> Nagata, um, submission expert. Uh, but before we get too far into the match, my main man Tiger Hitori is refing this match. Let's go. Yeah, he doesn't have to do uh as much uh interfere like trying to stop either man from murdering each other like he did against uh the showa era terrorist hey um, hey say whatever terrorist. it's <laughs> hey say that's hearsay um somehow nagata out wrestles boss to the floor and locks him into an arm bar but this gets reversed into a leg bar this is the expert submission grappling analysis that you get from just taking a walk. <laughs> All any leg submission is a quote leg bar. I I'm <laughs> I, I know there's the there's the ankle lock and a knee bar. There's knee and bar. We lift. got I I sometimes call the knee bar correctly. Uh, we got leg <laughs> bar. We got ankle lock. But that's only when Kurt Angle does it. I don't know what an oh, ankle okay. lock is aside okay. from that. <laughs> um. <clears throat> All right, let's see it here. Um, oh, yeah, this is a pro wrestling match. I ha I forget yeah. halfway through. Uh, there's pinfalls. <laughs> yeah. <That laughs> I was a, like, hey, wait a minute. 
This is the first time we've seen someone, because of course his first is the first singles match is the bocce bocce match. This is the first time we've seen Boz in a scenario with pinfalls, which I think is interesting. Yes. Yeah, he doesn't go for it often, and it seems mostly like a desperation move for him. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's the thing that exists. Um, <laughs> after the pinfall breaks up, uh, they start rolling around. Uh, Boss starts raining. They eventually stand back up. Uh, they keep getting back up, and uh, Boss stands up and starts raining Muay Thai knees. Uh, they mm. they look like they suck. Yes, that, that, I think that's something that needs to be noted about all of Boss's performances. He definitely follows the Vader rule. Yes. Yeah. Um, mean uh, is a good way of putting. I think. <laughs> I think while we were watching uh, Boss Rudin matches, uh, Squall and I have thought that all of his performances, their main word that we could come up with is violence. Mm -hmm. It's very violent. <laughs> it's Agreed. Very, uh, it feels real to me, damn it. <laughs> but it, like, there's, a, there's a sequence um, I, ha I have marked here. It's at yeah. uh, 8... 844 of the daily motion video that we watched um but it is uh he like he sprawls um yuji's uh shoots a double leg on him boss sprawls and you can see like this is a shoot sprawl like nagata is trying to take him down and mm. boss is trying to prevent it and then he puts on a uh, a uh, wizard and then trips nagata to the ground and you can see both men are just struggling uh as yeah. much as they can and i have to imagine uh what i guess happened is boss told him like actually try to take me down don't don't give me anything easy yeah. um, because it's easier for him to uh, make it look real if it is. Yeah, that's pretty legit. That sounds about right. Sam, um, what are your thoughts on this match? Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Uh, and you got, I, I, to give context as well, I believe it's, so it's a year out to the day, funnily enough, as well. That's crazy. Of, of that Karl Malenko match. And from that point, I believe he had, uh, just came into New Japan around February time. Um, and his debut match for New Japan was at the Tokyo Dome, which just is crazy, which is a crazy sentence. That is nuts. Uh, but I think he had a free match like run up until he fought for the, um, the IWGP title against Nagata. And one of those matches was against Hiroshi Tanahashi, which I just find a hilarious. And he squashed Tanahashi in three minutes as well, which I find even funnier. <laughs> Unlike in the Scott this... Hall video where Tanahashi squashes him in three minutes. Yes. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. This is the second time Jobber Tanahashi has popped up with this series. <laughs> <laughs> Someday we'll get to full power Tanahashi, but today is not that day. So I'm very happy to see Buzz have a, like a, a hybrid butchy butchy anokiism sort of thing now to his repertoire and re wrestling and it Absolutely. shows in this match a lot i mean being a muay thai practitioner i i immediately love the uh the muay thai clinch knees from buzz but yuji nagata answering with teeps as well and buzz being like i see what you're trying to do so i'm just gonna slam you to the ground <laughs> yeah uh there is a judo throat into kimura combo that happens yeah. Uh, mean as hell style. I love uh, it. I, absolutely. Uh, I also love Bars being a man who loves, who understands the, the art of the cheap pop by <laughs> including uh, the Shining Wizard to his moves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He has a, a. I was shocked to see like the Shining Wizard as a move in Boss Rutan's. <laughs> <laughs> uh repertoire but it's a, it's a good shining wizard it looks like it hurts it more or less is just like a he stands on their knee and, and then hits them with his knee and yeah. I, can um, see, I can see backstage someone boz asking someone to show him the shining wizard just so he yes. can pop the crowd i love this keiju muto guy <laughs> He's definitely hot dog in a grandstanding afterwards, though, because he knows exactly what he did. <laughs> he just made for real. But uh, yeah, I love the uh, like, like the 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 final bits from this is like when they start to just start throwing bombs at one another, 
Um, we have a roundhouse kick that kn knocks uh, Nagata down yeah. to the mat, but he immediately gets right back up and gets, goes, I tell you what, I'm going to give you an exploder suplex for your troubles for doing that. <laughs> Fucking wrist clutch exploder suplex, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah. Love it. And then he does, and then Yuji Nagata does what he does best and, uh, and, taps, a, and taps a full out with a face lock as well, of all things. Mm hmm. Um,. Yeah, that was pretty nuts. Uh, I, I, am I, I, I still forget what a Nagata lock is, but it's a sensibly addressed up cross face. Okay, yeah, exactly. that is what the Nagata lock is. Okay. Yeah, there's Sweet. like, is there's what like four different technical like Nagata locks? Yes, but they're all just dressed up cross faces. For sure, <laughs> for sure. Um, so like. In my opinion, this match is good asterisks when it's not pretending to be an MMA. If I have yeah. if I were to have an opinion. Um it it like when it starts doing pro wrestling shit, it is like I start popping crazy with like the second that shining wizard gets thrown, I'm like, oh hell yeah, this is my yeah. shit right here. <laughs> um but like the beginning is kind of slow for what it yeah. is. I mm. it's pretty fun watching Boss start taking liberties with Nagata. But <laughs> like uh, aside from that, like you, you know, mm -mm. It, that when it when it becomes pro wrestling, I'm a big fan. Understandable. Yeah. Sam, you have any closing thoughts on this one? Yeah, I mean, it what it was I I think not, I was going to say, not the best New Japan match of bars that we'll see. But it what it was, for, honestly, I mean, in 2002, and he's going up for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, it is a darn good match. And I will still say it, and I will shout it to the high heavens. Dave Meltzer was wrong about Anokiism in 2002. <laughs> yes, absolutely correct. That was, they I mean, had that Rick was... Steiner and Goldberg going up against oh, each other. Yeah. That's also, goaded complete... as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just so good, just so good, and that was so sort good. of the theme of our uh, our previous episode, the Yuji Nagata one. Is that Dave has lied to you? Yeah, <laughs> love you, Dave. I know you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now we're going to uh, where all hope uh, goes to die. Uh, English rule. Um, oh no! And by English <laughs> rule, I mean European catch rules. Uh, with a bat from about with Osamu Nishimura, and so Which... Nishimura, as I understand it, uh, was trained by none other than the guy who's refing this. Uh, <laughs> Which I there. mean seems a little sketch to <laughs> me. Um, it's, but, it's like the odds have been stacked against Bars here. <laughs> so he, Tony St. Clair did not actually wrestle for World of Sport itself, but he's from that world of uh, like the Catch Wrestling Association, I think mm -hmm. All-Star Wrestling. Um, so very much like old school style um, European Catch Wrestling. But at mm. this time, um, Osamu Nishimura, it was sort of his gimmick that he would challenge people to this specific stipulation uh, <laughs> of these European catch rules matches. And one of yeah. the victims, I'll say, uh, who challenged him here, the most recent one in 2007, was Toshiaki Kawada, who what? had to wrestle European <laughs> yeah. catch rules. Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know what that is. He knows how to do a stretch plum. Leave that boy he alone. To, he knows how to dump you on top of his head. On top of your head. The he doesn't know what a off. round is. He has and one round, first, and it's 40 minutes. This is the first time this rule set's been invoked. Um, and, of course, it's invoked against a guy who also doesn't know what a catch is. But he does. <laughs> he is European, so there is that. Maybe he gets power from that. Um... If we're getting into it, uh, so I want to, uh, I guess an apology. Um, so I do, I take the notes pretty much a day before, uh, we start recording. And, uh, well, I was off of work yesterday. It was 10 o'clock. Uh, I got three out of the four matches done. Uh, 
I could not sit through a 30 minute match uh, <laughs> when it was like 1130. So like I have 12 notes for this one. So my play by play is going to be uh, short. Sam, do you have anything to say about Mr. Nishimura before we get into this? It's crazy of how I know a lot of people talk about Timothy Thatcher being secretly mm. British, but I feel like Osamu Nishimura has has a strong case of being secretly British as well. As well, he's very we're British. Point, we're pointing he has out a beer his, belly. Yeah, we're pointing out his physique. He is particularly beer, British. He has beer belly, no shoulder development. We have crazy like <laughs> hair that that is totally got wet. Like he ran into a shower. Well, he ran through a shower, I should say, backstage, and that's how he got like, just, like his hair wet. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> and he he's wearing like uh, the most British catch outfit I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, which is the black boots, the black trunks. Uh, no pads on the knees. Of course. Um, I think he, he has a towel. Those. He has a towel. Uh, pretty cool. And yeah, he's he's an outrageously British man. Uh, if, if if Antonio Inoki was British, it would be Osamu Nishimura, basically. Yeah, <laughs> not yeah, for real. Accurate. Um, do you have and... any? Do you have any? Con Sam, do you have any context on uh, uh Mr. Uh, Tony Saint uh, Saint Blair here? Or do you, so Tony's is he notable at all. He is quite notable as of okay. um, like he debuted in 1966 and didn't retire until 2006. That's so he had a pretty right. he had a huge run. Uh, born and raised in Bolton, he had kind of um, uh, bit parts and 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 uh, stints within the two companies that were associated with World of Sport, even though he never really got a chance to be on World of Sport television. Mm. So he ended up usually having matches against guys like Giant Haystacks, Fit that Finley, yeah. Kendo Nakazaki. He ended up actually, the closest he ever got to a major promotion was actually being part of the, in the UK tour, I think in the early 90s for the WWF. But that's about as close as he really got to kind of like being on on, on like with a major company. Um, but yeah, <laughs> hey, I mean, uh, he is the most British man I've, <laughs> I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, yep. red. And I do find it interesting that they uh, that Ishimura. It, it's weird about because um, just looking at his like Wikipedia page is fascinating. Because he he was initially sent on excursion to NWA, um, yeah. <laughs> and then got sort of passed around and just ended up at the Snake Pit. Well, <laughs> That's not that easy. Was, uh, he ends up at the <laughs> so he goes to NWA. He then goes to ECW to challenge Shane Douglas for the yes! NWA yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Gets sent to wait for it the Netherlands to train at Boz's gym, the Chris Dolman gym. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then he only then he finally gets to the uh the snake pit. Uh that I want to watch that Shane Douglas match. That has to be cursed as hell. <laughs> Get out of here, you bitch. Like, I don't know whether either New Japan thought he just consistently wasn't seasoned enough or just what the hell was happening but normally on an excursion it's like you go maybe you go to mexico for a few years then you have a few matches in the states and then you come back but i don't think i've seen anyone go through so many territories on their excursion what's Some, wrong with him somewhere in the mid-90s fujinami went oh fuck where did nishimura go <laughs> <laughs> he got lost in transit <laughs> he's stuck in the airport yeah get him out they also apparently uh once he came back um he said they sent him again in 97 to canada of course they did then, oh cool he was showing with that duel of the butcher in 2001 they sent him again what? to uh train with the funks what <laughs> wait by <laughs> default like Nishimura should be considered as the greatest wrestler of all time by who yeah. he was trained by. <laughs> and yet he's only okay. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, that's fine. That's just, I, bl I, blame, I blame B. Brian Blair, who trained him at one point as well for that. The killer B himself. But, God damn it. 
<laughs> okay, so this stipulation is interesting. They're going, it's European catch rules, but what it's actually trying to say is the old school, uh, like, British catch thing with rounds. Uh, mm -hmm. We have three minute rounds, a 30 minute time limit. And I don't know how long in between rounds because they've cut it out of the video, but normally it's like thirty seconds. Yeah, um, I I have mixed opinions on whenever sports gets in my pro wrestling. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so it depends because I am a big pure rules head. Uh, as a guy who likes Nigel McGuinness, I kind of have to. Um, I like how it can tell a story. Um, but at the same time, it's like point systems and rings these kind of rounds i guess are kind of fun because it kind of makes forces boss rudin to be like ah shit i can't finish this match which is kind of the theme of this is that boss rudin is like three seconds away from finishing a match but the round breaks it up yeah um giving him enough time uh nishimura enough time to just like recover um yeah so, eh, it, it, it's not egregious here, but, you know, I have, yeah. So, what I do think is interesting about it, like you said, there's sort of the near fall, and by near fall, I mean, like, nearly finishing him. Yes. Um, and I, I think it's interesting, because this is Boz, once again, a little stylistically different. He's adapting it for this match, because this is the most grapple-heavy, I guess, we'll ever see Boz. Yeah. Um, of he really tries to work the mat here, despite ultimately the the story being that he's got the strikes. And I'm pretty sure he can't do close fisted punches because of this stipulation. But for the life of me, I couldn't find a better uh, explanation of what uh, European catch rules mean specifically in the Nishimura context. I wonder if you can look this up. No, I've tried this. I tried, I, spent like, <laughs> did you do the specific like company too? I'm not questioning yeah. your research ability. No, but. yeah, this was me trying to find Nishimura. The best I found was a uh, a blog who also was confused about it. Oh, awesome! Yeah. <laughs> Damn it! All right. Well, I'm gonna. It, I'm assuming because they're basing it on because the best I can do is look at other like, um, you know, um. Was it NXT had they they called it like British rounds or something of like, ah yes yeah like yeah. their other companies uh and then you know even going back to like World of Sport before that have their own versions of it so I understand what it's alluding to with the name of the rule set but I can't figure out exactly what it is because it seems like one of those things where they assumed everyone knew what it meant so they didn't feel the na need to elaborate. Ugh. It'd be nice. Yeah, it would be nice. At least, it's, like, put up the text. I won't just, be able to read it, but... It's just British, bruv. What's there to understand? It, isn't it obvious? You have to go out there, you get the chippy. You get the point. You do <laughs> the... People, you do... A lot of people think catch rules involves Mortal Kane. Not a lot of people know that. <laughs> One Kane. of the, the funniest things in the first round I really enjoy um, is the striking. Because of the mm. fact that Boz is doing his normal Boz thing, um, and Nishimura <laughs> comes in with uh, a few Euro, uh, Euro, Euro <laughs> kid up and Yes, and Boz does really sell those. Like this is him continuing to get better as a seller. Yeah, he's doing great. Um, uh, like the European uppercuts are a little strange because I'm used to the Claudio <laughs> Castagnoli flavor. Oh, yes. Yeah. So more or less, he's just punching him in the chest. Yeah, but like going upwards. Upward style, um, yeah. Uh, and I, also, <laughs> I also greatly enjoy. There's a point in which um, Boz goes for a spinning back kick and nails Ishimura in the torso, and then in there's there's something uh, Sam can speak to this. Uh, you see a lot in UFC fights as well. When th someone throws a kick at you, for whatever reason, you feel an urge to compulsively throw a kick right back yeah. at them, like the <laughs> yes. same kick. And Nishimura launches a, a shittier spinning back kick at him that completely whiffs, it, uh, whiffs at the head. And he's so proud of himself after I doing don't know, it, too. Sam, what is it psychologically? You have to do it. I feel it's the primal caveman instinct of you. F you throw something flashy. I'll throw something flashy back at you. 
So but it's always worse because they know it's coming. It really is. It's it's the uh, uh, MMA equivalent to whenever there's a chop battle in pro wrestling. You know, <laughs> yeah. You throw really. one kick, I'm gonna outkick you, and then you kick at each other a little bit, but obviously not as extended. And eventually, somebody's gonna do a double leg takedown or whatever MMA guys do. Yes. Arm drag. Oh, also <laughs> know on this uh, the opening round. Um, once again, Boz as a fucking limb seller, man. Uh, because I mean, Nishibor almost in almost all pro wrestling outside of Mexico, you work the the left side. So he's going for the left arm. I believe it's the right arm of uh, Boz that's fucked up in real life. Mm. Um, oh, okay. But so he is working the unhurt arm as a you know a nice guy move, but he would be doing it anyways. Um, but there's a few times, especially like um, he'll like figure for Boz's arm and they'll take it to the ropes and he'll crank it for those uh, those uh, like four and a half seconds he has before it's broken up. Um, mm-hmm. And Boz is just immediately so good at selling the arm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can imagine it. It's from getting arm barred by Suzuki half a twelve million times. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That'll do it for you. That'll do it for you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, guy like me, I'm if I'm training with Minoru Suzuki, I'm not. I'm getting my ass whooped. So there's no training. I'm you know, I'm the young lion to test a, a, to build tricks on. Okay. So in round two, the thing that's most immediately interesting to me is uh, Boz runs the ropes. Yes. Well, he does. I, he does actually. I was thinking it was Koji. No, they do like kind of a a dual rope run. If my yeah. brain is serving me correctly. Well, uh, he and then off, he shoots off um, Ishimura from the headlock. Uh, Nakamura does a uh, first. He uh, ducks under, and then he fucking leaps over. Uh, Ishimura proving that his knees are not completely fucked, and then later on he runs the ropes himself. It looks so smooth. Yeah, he more or less does mm. the root and taunt. Yes, over well, him. he does the root and yeah. uh, leap for joy celebration. Wait, I forgot to mention that in the Bachi Bachi match. Um, yeah, he does after murdering poor Kawa Greco, he does the boss hop. And just yeah. Just and if in any, sheer joy. If, <laughs> he anyone else this man. That, if anyone else did that, it'd be heelish as fuck. Uh, but because it's Boz, it's not. No, I'm ima- every time Boss does that, I'm imagining a boing, boing. <laughs> Just <laughs> an adorable sound effect at this bald murderer. Sam, do you have anything to say about Boz doing more pro wrestling shit in round two? Um, I, I feel like at this point, he was, he, he, he was thinking to himself, right, I've got another, what's it? Oh god, I've got another twenty-five minutes. Right, I need to break out the. I need to break out traditional pro wrestling. Anoki told me that I can run the ropes and make it look all right. Got to do the running the ropes, <laughs> and it oh. looks good. No, for it sure, does. it does. You're right. It the concept, the silly concept of of, of running the ropes in bars made it look. Uh, did not make it look silly. So yeah, he he did not embarrass himself, which is more right. than some people can say. To end the round, it's another one of those things where you're talking about how um, uh, Boz almost finishing him. I What I think is absolutely adorable is he st- uh, stuffs a takedown from Ishimura by putting in the Kimura. He yeah. sweeps him to the ground, and then he also locks in mm-hmm. the head Sweet. scissors, which is something Suzuki does all the time. Yeah. Um, oh, and yeah. So he, he's been taught this uh, by the Pancras boy, boys. I thought it was adorable to see it in pro wrestling. It's it's just really not nice to see. Like it seems like most of the all of these matches we've seen, that the tutelage of Misu and Funaki never really left Bars. No, all. yeah, formative memory. Uh, and both of those guys would go on to be great pro wrestlers. Who would have thunk it? Yeah, <laughs> who would have uh, thunk so it? Round three and four are really once we start to get like bomb throwing. I would say. Um, yeah. With some, uh, there's also a sequence in which Brian Danielson, uh, I know Brian Danielson has seen this match, uh, where yes. Ishimura puts him in sort of a, a Muda lock, but with a cravat hold, um, yes. and then rolls straight into a, uh, a surfboard stretch. Yes. Uh, and so, yeah, that's what, but he also has the legs figure forward during it, so it just looks even funkier. But yeah, that's why I noted, uh, Brian Danielson has seen this match. Yes. Uh, super, super, uh, funny. 
and uh, see that. What I like about Boz is whenever um, it, maybe he learned this from the Battle Arts boys, but whenever he gets in a hold and he doesn't like it, he just starts punching Ishimura in the ribs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Shades of Daisuke Ikeda. Yeah. At least he doesn't do a Fuminori Abe and oil checks him. Yeah. <laughs> So, I don't know, I, I'm not going to be super granular about the remainder of the match, but either of you have any highlights you want to talk about? Um, I, uh, well, guy like me, note-taking Jones, mm -hmm. uh, um, I think there's a moment where, uh, I might be confusing with another, oh, actually, during round two, Boss Rutten does a thinking taunt. Yes, he does. Mm. I, I really enjoy that taunt. Whenever Boss does a taunt, it's it's very charismatic. Um, that, I guess you could say that about whenever Boss does anything, but very charismatic taunt taunter, this Boss Rudin. How about you, Sam? What I like about this is that you can definitely... The, the dynamic of, um, of Boss being the expert striker and Nishimura being the... Uh, the, the guy with the ground game. But Nishimura also knowing that most of Baz's matches have ended with him tapping out as well. Mm. So he knows that submission that like submission wise, that his that's his weakest point. And Nishimura kind of really doubles down on that. By there mm. are some moments where he really stretches Baz with with submissions. And uh Baz mm -hmm. sells them really well. Like he he again, another thing, Buzz sells submissions really, really well. He's good at it. Gotta it be proud of the boy. Been put in them. For yes, real. in the, for real on God. It's like, uh, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dramatize about this. This really hurts. I need to get to the ropes or punch the living daylights out of this help, guy. Help <laughs> and then it me. helped because even though you know you would assume um, he's good at selling like shoot submissions because he's actually been put in them, uh, but then even like stuff like the surfboard stretch, he yes. does it really well. Yeah, so good. Uh, I I I think. Th it, it had to be during his pro wrestling training where he like that's the thing that stuck with him the most mm. is that being able to sell which if you're going to remember anything from your training selling is a pretty good one yeah it's sort of the the necro butcher school of thought which is that uh even if you don't really have any specific moves you do you just kind of shamble around if you can realistically sell it, you can tell a story. And of course, Boz can do moves, and so can Necro Butcher. But yeah. I, I, I feel like you are discounting the goat of strong style Necro Butcher with his famous move, the Tiger Driver. <laughs> oh, I wish I was joking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, IWA Mid South commentary team. As for the rest of this match, um, it's my least favorite of the ones here. I still think it's fine. Um, mm. Like Ugh. it didn't, it didn't really feel like a drag for the thirty minutes when I watched it, um, trying to decipher uh, what the stipulation was. Um, but I think the final match we'll get to is my favorite of the ones uh, we're gonna watch. Mm. Uh, Teacher, Sam, do you have any clo you have any closing thoughts on this European catch rules match? So it ends in a draw. Yes. Which, oh God, I guess, yeah. uh, which, again, time limit draw, it goes the full 10 rounds. Everyone goes home happy in that sense. Um, I think as well. Me, who Aside from me, I wanted it's Boss Rudin to kick this fucking dude's head off. Well, I think about rounds in terms of scoring them. And I'm like, well, Boz was about to finish him at the end of every round. He should be yeah. declared the winner by decision. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Um. Eighth match in, did, did you, did, I was going to say, eighth match in, does he, was this a test for him to see how long he could go, if he could do the long slog of matches? Uh, probably. Yeah. Uh, probably on Anoki's part, this was a test for him. Uh, he somewhat passed, I would yeah. say. He got a C. I, he got it. He, he definitely passed. If Anoki wanted to put him up against Bob Sapp in, 45, in a 45-minute classic at the Tokyo Dome, it was very no, possible. No. <laughs> Which is guy like me, I'm paying, I'm paying $300 to watch Bob Sapp go 45 minutes taking water breaks. It's funny, though. I don't, feet think, I don't actually think Sapp is a, has that bad of a gas tank. Yeah. No, yeah. For, which is shocking considering his MMA matches. Well, yeah, because which... fighting he definitely does. But I've seen him, like, you know, I've seen him go, like, 15, 20 minutes. And he's normally fine. Yeah. 
I just love that that match would simply just be the pair of them throwing uh, missile drop kicks at one another. <laughs> yeah, my exactly. dope Bob Sap with the with the missile drop kicks. Because the Bob Sap paradox is that, um, like, when he's in New Japan, especially, they schedule him for like these like um, these like uh, like eight minute matches or whatever. But then mm. when they have him go for the title. And he goes for like fifteen to twenty minutes. He's fine. So I'm like, it turns out you actually didn't need to protect him. Am I remembering <laughs> correctly that Bob Sapp has a match with OC- Atsushi Onita? He yeah. does. Am I, am I okay? I was trying. I was like, it was in my head. I was like, isn't there a match where Bob Sapp is in an exploding ring? Yes, I yes? bullied uh, Andos by giving him that match for secret. Santa. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm a bad she, yeah. person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that was that's pretty nuts. Um, I have I I would say that I have a, a small degree in Bob Sapism. Mm. That I've seen like five matches of his, including Necro Butcher. Yeah, funnily enough, mm. uh, it's weird that that's happened twice where we mentioned Necro Butcher, but you know. <laughs> so um, I, I I actually do have a note on this match. One last thing, uh. Mm. There is a move I call the Boss Rutan like double likes like clap like you know how Vader <laughs> yes, does yes, like the yes. like the the arm clap yes uh, Boss oh. Rutan does it with his legs <laughs> I, I, I I love this move so much I what I what's the because I noted it in the Koji Kanemoto match I what did I call it, it do, yeah. um yeah it's, it's the it's the it's the flying scissor whoopsie i call it <laughs> <laughs> that's a good name for it um another thing uh i want to note uh last thing but this is kind of a thing in all of his matches so there's this thing that boss Rutan does which i call the infinite head kick combo yes uh, where boss Rutan just starts throwing head kicks for like five minutes and like the opponent always dodges them this move never works but he just keeps on going and going and going. It's like, wh- wh- where's this coming from? He's just, Stop. he's just, he's just channeling his inner Huarang from Tekken. The yes, he is absolutely hurrying <laughs> out crazy style. Um, yeah, he he should be in Tekken, by the way. And honestly, least... I I know how he's doing it because of the fact that like there's a uh like in the Muay Thai classes I've been to. Um, there's a sequence in which, like, uh, normally when you show up, they'll show you a few combos when you're doing bag work, and then they'll have you do rounds on the bag. And at one point, mm. they'll just start going, head kick, head kick, head kick. And you just have to throw <laughs> yeah. it into the bag for, like, one to two minutes straight. And this yeah. is what, this is the trauma that he's channeling of having to do this. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sure. Can I stop now? <laughs> Well, some okay. Dutch, Dutch guy stands there, uh, you know, menacingly in the corner. No, yeah, that, that, that's in every gym, actually. It's kind of strange. And during my BJJ the... class, I just had a Brazilian dude just watching over me, like just Is hovering it... over the ring. It was strange, <sighs> fearful, <Yeah>. even. <laughs> um, yeah, you did have Ben Rothwell, though. I did have Ben Rothwell. Have I? I've noted that on the podcast before, but yeah. I'm not sure if Sam has heard it. So, do you know who uh, Ben Rothwell is, Sam? I I do. Okay, so I I've I've not met him, but I've seen him in action before. And when I say that this is the most Wisconsin man I've ever seen, um, he is the most Wisconsin man I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, he he was doing a kickboxing lesson. Uh, when I came in, uh, I was wearing my BCC shirt. For Wearing context, the... Walk uh, went to go train BJJ at Ben Rothwell's MMA gym. Yes. Um, mm. I don't think Ben Rothwell knows what BJJ is, so thankfully he wasn't teaching me how to do it. Uh, he did secure a sweet guillotine on uh, um, Josh, Barnett. Josh Barnett, and he did yeah. knock out Uberim, so I will be thanking him for knocking out Uberim. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Ben Rothwell does that laugh. Uh, just normally, it's mildly more exaggerated to sound like a Street Fighter villain, <laughs> but uh, it, it's barely different. And um, let's see, yeah, he he's just a very Wisconsin human being. He swears and then apologizes, but then swears again. Um, oh, that's so Midwestern, by the way, isn't that it? Very much, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. The more I'm, the more I'm, the more I'm knowing about the Midwest, the more I'm realizing that the Midwest and the UK have far too much in common. You watch <laughs> your it? whore mouth. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's, I think it's anywhere that it's kind of rural creates the same people. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Strange <laughs> people. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah. The sea may divide us, but ultimately we're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, don't say that. <laughs> whenever, yeah. Whenever you put people in like a uh, like close to like a a, a bunch of farmer fields, they get bored and weird. They get <laughs> they start beating each other up a lot. Yeah. For sport, so, mostly. Our final match in Boz Rutten's final pro wrestling match today. I don't think he's coming back. Um, I, think I think he's ready best... to win the AEW World Championship. I really. agree. <laughs> I think it's his best Count your match John Moxley. and undoubtedly his best pro wrestling match. Oh, for uh, sure. Uh, it's against Koji Kanemoto. Um, and it's been forever since I've seen Koji. And uh, Walk made note of it as well, but I was like, oh yeah, that's where CM Punk stole his whole thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. literally. Flow for yeah. flow, bar for bar. Uh, CM Punk, you hack. I know you're listening. <laughs> yeah. it's, um, like a, it's, it's like he fusion danced with Koji Kanemoto and Steve Carino. Uh, it's, no, for real though. That's a that's a crazy call, but you're absolutely correct. <laughs> um, he Did even you... has the wrist tape on. Yes. Which is kind of like, oh god, this is just infringing. And I do... Um, Koji, like, the IWGP um, junior heavyweight title is a title I don't think New Japan has ever cared about. It was just a prop for Liger uh, at certain points. Um, The title looks good on Koji's waist. Like, he... Always has some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He looks sweet with the the title. So cool. cool towel. Oh yeah, um, there, it's like a claw, right? That's on the yes. towel, if I remember mm. correctly. Wasn't there yes. a group in New Japan that has a claw? Am I, am I just, oh. am I smoking drugs? Because I, I, I've played King of Coliseum too, and I remember distinctly a group with a claw. A claw. Was yeah. It, oh, I want to see. Was it Team Two Thousand? Yes. Maybe. Team yeah. Would it, have been, would it have been Team Two Thousand that had the claw? Yes. Sure. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> he, he has yeah, the with big... Such, with such luminaries like Michael Wall Street. Oh, who? And NWO Sting. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's my goat right there. Wearing the <laughs> red face paint. Ugh. <laughs> Can we forget about it is, Wolfpack It is thing? Team 2000. Nice, nice. Well, they did have Eddie, so, you know. Uh, they did yeah. have Eddie Guerrero, so I'll give him oh, I'll give pretty him based. for that. That's pretty based. I'm okay with that. Well, on paper, it's the most stacked, uh, the most stacked uh, stable you've ever seen. But that's because it was uh, NWO style, just sort of a mess. New, yeah. new, new world order. Um, <laughs> who is in Team Two Thousand? Can we? Can we? Everybody: Masahiro Chono, Scott Norton, Hiroshi Tenzon, Satoshi Kojima, Don Fry, Koji Kanemoto, please Akira, Horace Hogan, please Hiro Horace Saito, Hogan. Michael Wall Street, Jado, Gato, NWO Singh, Giant Silva. Giant Singh, Eddie Guerrero, Scott Hall, Black Tiger. Awesome. So we got my man Cheeseburger in there? Um, does not appear so. Oh, man. Still feel like the best members of them were, uh, still the best member of Team 2000 was Don Fry, but I digress. That's my goat right there. (laughs) It is sort of a crime that, uh, it's sad to me, I feel two ways about it, because Don Fry has two pro wrestling runs, he has his initial one, mm. and then he uh, stops to become uh, the t- champ in New Japan, and then he goes back. Um, <laughs> and when he goes back, that does give us Fry Takayama. Yes, that's, so that's for true. I, I am sad that he didn't do more, but you know, I don't want to deprive the world of Fry Takayama. Of course, this is it. Yeah, uh, maybe, I've linked. Maybe. I've- there's a world in which after Fry Takayama, he just takes his gloves off and leaves it in the ring. He can't outdo himself on that front. <laughs> that, I, you know, that's a crazy visual to end off Fry Takayama. I think that would have been like the best, a- inarguably. In spite of all time. Yes. I think mm-hmm. it is, but I, without it. But also, I've linked an image of Team 2000 reunion when all of them are old as hell. And Don Fry's oh. outfit is fucking nuts. 
He's got yes. like the Masahiro Chono fit. Band. Yeah. And he's old and he's just <laughs> it's a good look for Don. And me and the boys before. at the retirement home. <laughs> Not for real. <laughs> Chono and Kojima. Is very lucky that clearly the Yakuza thought his gimmick was funny. Um, yes. If not, he would be like buried in concrete. Oh, absolutely. He was smoking penises wearing the black leather vest <laughs> style. Hell yeah. <laughs> like, I guess his most... Yakuza kick's too good, so we can't kill him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he's making but, us look so cool. But he's so sweet, though. We can't be mad at this. He murdered Keiji Muto on his retirement. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he hit the STF. And Tiger Hat Hattori had to break it up. It was so violent. So with that diversion uh, in general with uh, early 2000s, <laughs> yeah, um, my bad. This match, we're going. He's going from the uh, IWGP IWGP Heavyweight Title to the Junior Heavyweight Title. Um, sure. And it is funny because Boz, his entire career, I believe, was around 200 pounds. Um, yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> he challenged for the uh, the heavyweight title versus the light heavyweight title in uh, in the UFC just because he thought it sounded better. Um, <laughs> he thought the heavyweight funny. title sounded cooler. Um, yeah. So here it is. I guess he is technically a junior heavyweight. Uh, which technically. Does, yeah. Um, it's at this point I want to remark upon Boz's physique because we haven't talked about it all episode. Um, his quads are crazy. Yeah, he is a nuts-looking human being. He kind of looks like Andos now that we mention it. But but with he all, really all does. the steroids. Yes. <laughs> Nat Nat Andos is natty, but uh, yeah. uh, not for Boss. He is a crazy-looking human being. Uh, I'm gonna note his steroid powers later in this match, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we'll get there when we get there. Uh, yeah, he's an insane-looking human being. I think in the picture that Sam sent, he's natural. Maybe? Question mark. Well, you can kind of, you can kind he's of. He's a little tell... too vain. Yeah. Well, you can tell, like in the early days, like pre pancreas and then as he gets into it, he's not on. If he is on something, it's not like uh, obscene. Yeah. Um, but then the longer he gets into pancreas, you can see his jawline visibly change. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as the TRT and Noki style. Yeah, yeah. He, he he he. You slowly see the metamorphosis of a brick shit house in Pancras. That's gonna be the name of my rap album: "Slow Metamorphosis of a Shit a Brick Shit House." <laughs> yeah. Sweet as hell. All I'm saying is, Ando, you better do the split jump soon uh, to oh, prove absolutely. to everyone that you are the you are Natty Buzzroot. <laughs> I expect that in the next shoot style, whatever the series is called. Love that, by the way. Shoot Please can. Shoot studies. I expect to see him doing the Van Damme split at the start of the video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> please. I'll, I'll get him to do it. <laughs> please, brother, please! <laughs> I'll drive up to Milwaukee. I'll take a plane to Milwaukee! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be outside your house. Oh, I also <laughs> want to point out that not just the... He didn't just... Punk didn't just steal uh, Koji's look, his moves... Um, he also, uh, even like, uh, when he has the taped up hands before the match starts, he starts like rolling his, uh, his wrist around. And he I've seen the Punk do that. Taunt. Yeah, I've seen <laughs> Punk, Punk do that it too. Yeah, he really just stole everything. He, yeah, he really tried to tell bar bar. He, he really tried to tell people that he stole that from Vandalay Silva, <laughs> didn't yeah. he? Yeah. It's like, Get out really? Of here. Because you took everything else from Koji. Just a hamburglar. Get him out of here. <laughs> I also think I think I'm Punk has seen like, like this. I think Punk has seen three UFC fights or just uh, MMA fights in general. And they were, and he was in all of them. Well, one mm. of them was Fry Takayama. Oh, oh absolutely. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but who knows what the other two are? I guess his fights. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the opening cool. of this match is explosive as fuck. I really mm. enjoy it. It is sweet as hell. Koji is like bursting straight at Boss, but he does a really smart thing where he like pump fakes it's a Boss hunt. out. He he it, like uh, he like goes. Huh, huh. Oh yeah, a duck under. Yeah, he duck under, and Boss is just sort of flying forward, but technically he does grab a double leg on it. And yeah. what I love about this is that 
they're going to go for a sprint here because immediately as soon as he gets down into side control, Koji starts just blasting knees into his ribs. Absolutely. Yes. It's sweet as hell. Just raining them bitches down. And immediately as soon as Boz starts to resist him, he goes and dives on the leg. So this is going to yeah. be really fast paced. Yes, he locks in the meanest ankle lock this side of Kurt Angle. Smiley face. Um, and, and more so than previous opponents, Koji wants to throw hands with Boz. Yes. Which I think is really interesting. It is really interesting, though his striking is uh, Vulcan-esque. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is where we get the infinite head kick combo you're talking about, although he misses all of them. That's the thing <laughs> with the infinite head kick combo. It never works. It well, just keeps happening. <laughs> I feel, I feel uh, immense terror for Koji in this moment because he has to time these ducks perfectly so yeah. that Paz doesn't shoot head kick him because he's <laughs> not pulling them. No, he is absolutely just spinning them out uh, kick pad style. Um, and as, uh, as Koji dives in, Boz grabs a, uh, a double underhook um, and then sort of just thrashes him around yeah. and then goes for the gilly. And it looks absolutely mm. disgusting. And, oh who, and who better to sell the guillotine than one Red Shoes Uno who is doing taunts crazy, hitting the splits mid-guillotine yes. in fear. Yeah. And in, in very uh, boy tie fashion, adding insult to injury, as he has the gilly there, he just starts, he's not tapping, so he just starts raining knees onto yes! him. Yes! <laughs> fucking crazy. This shit, this shit means something to me, man. In, in uh, boy tie, you can't actually choke them, but you could theoretically hold them there and just start blasting them. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so what I like about this match is it's full of MMA memes, uh, as the only yes. way I can describe it. Um, yes. Because Koji uh, takes him down with a head and arm throw, which anyone who does grappling will tell you. The head and arm throw is a meme throw because you almost always get your back taken. Because um, mm. as you land in what I call scuffed scarf hold. Um, <laughs> it's almost always terrible. Uh, and Boz immediately just rolls him down um, yeah. <laughs> and then goes for an art bar because it is just not a good idea. Absolutely. Uh, and during all of this, uh, who who shows up but Tommy Dreamer but tall? <laughs> uh, yeah, Tommy Dreamer is just watching this match. Uh, I, we We dubbed him Tyler's dad. Yeah, uh, Tyler, your uh, dad is here. Eric Andre bit, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, he just I kind of appears. I, that's uh, that's Scott Norton, you two. Yeah, <laughs> I was is gonna. Say, Tommy Dreamer, but I was like, don't you dare besmirch the name of Scott Norton <laughs> <laughs> with Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> with Tommy Dreamer. I mean, he does look like Tommy Dreamer. He oh does, no, in that, in that shot, yeah, he does. Like, oh, they don't look like the same guy. We were completely shocked. We didn't know what was happening. We we I if if we were watching this in person, we would both do a double take look at each other cartoon style and then go back to looking at it. And well, yeah, I really guess Scott Norton is Scott Norton approves of this match. Well, it's really just it's literally just like Scott Norton is from Minnesota, so he's like a weird giant man uh who doesn't talk much. That's he, the difference between him and Tommy Dreamer, but they're the same build. He, yeah. He's just kind of looming over in the background of this match. Uh, it just has his arms crossed. He's like occasionally drinking water. He's drinking. Yeah. Well, he's he got the towel like, on. If you don't know, he was sort of like the workhorse of NWO Japan. Um, he was Chono's number one shooter. IWGP, um, IWGP champion, right? Yeah. 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 He was. He's one of those guys who, for whatever reason, could never make it in uh the states but then just like goes went absolutely crazy when he went to japan uh mm -hmm. in terms of just like really good i also think about other big guys like uh, uh the hip-hop hippo yeah giant bernard um he that dude went crazy in japan yeah uh, absolutely and uh because but... i just saw um baron corbin just got released from uh wwe uh, and a bunch of people were saying, if that dude gets signed by, like, Noah or something, he's going to inexplicably go on the run of his career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so... What was I going to say? I got lost. I apologize. Continue. Um, as for the, the match itself, um, another MMA meme here 
is when uh, Boz gets, uh, he sort of goes for a cravat and then rolls rolls Kochi into um, a body triangle going for the rear naked choke. And there's a very real thing. If you cross your feet on the body triangle, you can really easily pull a foot over and then just try to break, break someone's shin. And that's mm. exactly what Koji does, is start cranking yeah. Boz's ankles against each other. Yeah. So I want to pick up where I had gained the thought again. So the reason those guys didn't make it is because it was the 90s yeah. in America. So yeah. it was the Attitude Era. It was WCW and its death throws. Yeah. So like Vince Russo is writing. Oh no! Uh, the NWO. Um, so no, Scott Norton was never going to be cool in America because uh, he was too, and the hip hop hippo was too busy being the hip hop hippo, brother. Um, yeah, there was no way those guys were going to ever be cool. Well, and... what surprises me about Scott Norton is because he he just sort of looks like, in a weird way, if you mashed um us. Uh, if Scott Hall and Kevin Nash together, uh, yeah, that would, that would be Scott Norton, <laughs> which is yeah. weird to me that he didn't get more pushed in like WCW. Um, didn't he didn't fuck with him, Bretta? Well, because what happened though when didn't work went, for me, man. When he went to Japan, Goldberg. this is not going to surprise you, Walk. Is um, so Sam, something Walk and I have been discovering is um, what we describe as, like, the Ricky Chosu cloning machine, where everybody <laughs> Ricky Chosu becomes him, um, because you have, like, um, Masa Saito, uh, he and um, Tenryu trained Tomohiro Ishii, Masa yep. Kitamiya, um, yep. Kensuke Sasaki. Yep. Like, everyone he trains just becomes a clone of him. Yeah. Um, and Scott Norton went, um, and when he was in New Japan... Um, he a guy who helped like train him for the New Japan style was Masa Saito. Um, oh, and that's yeah. what and that's what like strong style built him. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. That's pretty based. Yeah. All right. Enough on Scott Norton though. Back to the match. Maybe we'll do an episode on him eventually. He deserves. That'd be sweet. It. As we just so I don't call him the tall Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> as we as we continue the trend of uh, me just. Uh, exclaiming the virtues of New Japan when no one cared about it. Yeah, wouldn't it be cool if you could upload videos talking about New Japan? Oh, it would be so cool. people can know a little bit more about New Japan in that era. I think yeah, that, that would be, be cool. true. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> super cool, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm not talking uh, about a certain TV company walk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm going to fight you. I'm going to go come to my house and we will duel <laughs> for the right to I've use it, New Japan footage. I've said it before, the 90s. but at least if uh, Noki was still alive, I think and in charge, I feel like I could arm wrestle him for the rights to uh, use uh, the footage. <laughs> but do you think you could win? Oh God! Uh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Because conceptually, against like eighty-year-old Antonio Noki, I know I could probably beat him when he's like sick and dying. But there's part of me because he believes in himself, makes me start second guessing it. <laughs> he knows that he can beat you in his head, so I don't think you're gonna be able to lose. He he's gonna be able to lose. He would yeah. play. I don't know how he would win, but he would win. He would like. He'd be staring you down the whole time, so you'd feel self conscious. So, um, with I was thinking where we were left in the match is they stand back up, and this is I was talking about how Koji is really um, down to clown in terms of uh, striking. Mm -hmm. There's just a really fun sequence in which Koji starts checking some kicks. He does a really yes. good job. Mm -hmm, like for the, sure, the, he's really got the timing. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. You can tell that he and Boz Rutten probably just did a bit of sparring to uh, um, warm themselves up themselves. to each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. because uh, specifically what they do, it's, it's very much of, um, uh, there's something, uh, Conor McGregor, he calls it playful sparring, where you just sort of throw like 30% power uh, shots at each other. And once yeah. again, Sam can speak to this, but sometimes when you're trying to learn combos or just get into the flow, um, at some point during like a, a striking class, you'll just sort of throw little strikes at each other and you practice blocking or uh, countering. And that's yeah. sort of what the sequence looks like. Um, yes. As they're both just sort of raising the legs to check. Um, and it, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of playful and fun. But then Boz dives on a double leg. 
which is unexpected. Or sorry, mm. he grabs a single and then doubles off. I will, who's supposed to be the striker. I will never not find it funny whenever Boss does a double leg takedown. Well, the kickboxing the, boy. Well, the truth is Boss is a better grappler than anyone he's in the ring with. Because -uh. he also became a damn good grappler in, uh, in MMA. No, uh yeah. Yuji Nagata. Yeah. He was out <laughs> grappling him. <laughs> well, it's just funny of him having to, like, dumb himself down, um, <laughs> trying to pretend like he's not as good. Absolutely. Um, as the match goes on, uh, Boss is kind of dominating on Koji, but Koji manages to lock in a triangle onto Boss Rutten, but using the powers of steroids... Boss Rutten picks up Koji and Rampage bombs him like dan like really sheerly onto the mm. mat. Um, and Koji has no choice but to roll out onto the ground. Uh, it is insane. I think only people on steroids can do Rampage bombs. Probably. I also want to note before that, um, when oh, yeah. Boss is in mount, um, he does one of the smoothest uh, arm bar transitions oh, yeah. I've ever yeah. seen. Uh, in which, in once again, it's a Minoru Suzuki move. Um, mm. He he grabs a uh, he grabs an underhook um, from the top, and then sort of like just spins around him and just like just knee slides around. And God, it's so fast and so fluid. It's it's really beautiful. Absolutely. I, I have it noted as the Misu special. Uh, yeah. My, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, I don't know, like, legitimately, though, it really is adorable how much he uh, he, he just steals from Minoru Suzuki. He truly is the CM Punk of Minoru Suzuki. <laughs> <laughs> except, uh, also, except Boz oh, was that. actually successful in stealing other people's ah! moves to become a UFC heavyweight champion. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking um, about? Sam Punk got, was undefeated. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, um, before we get to the Rampage Bomb, um, the uh, once again, when they get uh, Koji gets into full mount, and instead of going for a slick arm bar, he just starts beating the shit out of Boz Root. And he then does, says, yeah. <laughs> and then he pulls the mounted triangle. He does like the funniest, like eh, eh, eh. It's like it's palm like, strikes. It's like he tried. He saw Buzz's uh, pancreas uh, tapes about. I could do open hand palm strikes. A guy like <laughs> me, absolutely. And this match does feel like a celebration of pancreas. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, for sure. And after watching the pancreas matches, for sure. Because there's the there's the general aesthetic that they're trying to hurt each other, and then just a little bit of jankiness because it's guys who are good in works trying to like sort of reverse engineer what MMA looks like, and they mostly got it. They're just a little confused. Mm. <laughs> they're more of they're in a shoot, and then they call for a finish. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, but they're not taught like they don't call it at a certain point they just kind of like start thinking like they try to mind meld with each other during the yeah. match mm. and well, then uh, they get the finish so, so for those who aren't familiar about pan uh, about how pancreases worked because i have to constantly remind myself that this is a pro wrestling channel um and i can't take for, <laughs> like that was a big uh, that's gonna be a big part of my next video is i have to like reiterate that um I don't know, or like when I explained checking leg kicks um, in the most recent video, I have to remind myself that there are people who just watch like AEW. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like me watching CZW. But so Pancrase was a very early, uh, one of the most early fight promotions that was any bit legit. Um, and as it started, how it would typically work is that there were a few that are outright like just worked matches. But normally, they knew that, um, so MMA can be unsatisfying, right? A guy could just blow out his knee in the uh, the first mm -hmm. minute or something, or uh, yeah, like a flash KO that's not really satisfying. Um, and so they knew pro wrestling, they expected the story in like, you know, maybe 10 to 20 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. And so they would just pad time by like mm. just chain wrestling for 10 minutes. And then they just, okay, we're going to actually fight now. Um, yeah. So that's how, and then as it went on, um, because Boz became one of their top guys, and Boz never did it, participate in any works, they got more legit. So later on, they would basically be all uh, full shoot fights. 
Uh, but that's sort of the jankiness of Pancras. Yeah. It's, well, it gives it its charm, if you ask me. It is <laughs> and, charming. <laughs> Jank can be charming. Are they good at making it look like it's not worked? Uh, yeah, yes. I asked Sam. Oh, more well, than I, I was, I was going to say, more than Takada did. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> And it's not to say that I don't like Takata. I mean, come on, guys. I love no, Nobuhiko Takata. Takata is a, like, I mean, this show and on my channel, Takata is a re uh, a reoccurring uh, comedic punching bag. But the fact that he made himself a meme in a hustle confirms for the fact that he would probably welcome me making fun of him. <laughs> yeah. So, in pro wrestling, he is a god. And it's the same way we make fun of CM Punk for his MMA career or whatever. But, like... <laughs> He was really good, but he's also really funny. Yeah, I have a hot take here. I think CM Punk is a good wrestler. Oh, yeah. That's that's pretty wild. Yeah. Crazy. So yeah, after I know. the Rampage Bomb, Koji goes to the outside. Um, as he comes back, uh, Boz, like, sort of heelishly, like, confronts him while he's still in the apron and head kicks yeah. him. Yeah, Stops pretty him sweet. Back down. Pretty sweet. And Boz is a little taunt. It's, uh... He's just sort of like jaw jacking. I can't tell if it's with the ref or whoever because it sort of is just zoomed in on his face. And yeah. dude, when Koji gets back in, Koji is ready to throw fucking hands. He is ready. Um, <laughs> Boss sort of does like the Max Holloway of like he he goes towards the center of the ring and he puts his hands like uh like sort of like a come here taunt. He yeah. does do a, a show me what you got taunt, which is what I noted. And then he just goes for a fireman's carry and just fucking dumps him. Well, it's the reason he's able to do that is that he just shoot punt like palm strikes uh, Koji into the liver, and then just picks him up side. and tosses him. Yeah, it's to the wrong side. Oh, so kidneys. Yeah, uh, but also yeah. I do like it because Koji actually throws some pretty good looking hooks at him, um, mm -hmm. and Boz slips them to go into the body shot and then into the fireman's carry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and then Boss starts going for pinfalls, which I found weird, but... Well, first he goes for a... Th it's just a thrashing as he puts yes! a knee on belly uh, and then just starts picking his head up and slamming it, bouncing it off the mat repeatedly Jesus like a fucking Christ, yeah. Ball. It harkened back to his self-defense video of, oh, don't you ever oh, do God, this! this. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then Sam, what does he do once he's standing? So, he does, like... One thing before he does that, he does like this a missile drop kick immediately followed by a double leg, which I've yes. never seen a guy pick go like <laughs> be so fast at doing a missile drop kick, getting right back up for a double leg. But then, of course, because he has it in his repertoire, he, know, he knows he has to break it out as well. He does, of course, do another shining wizard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty sweet. Oh, love yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, this is like. I don't know. Uh, once again, uh, Meltzer gave this three and a quarter stars. Uh, this match fucking rules. Yeah, this is pretty sweet. It's such a crime that it was his last one. Yeah. I mean, that's what happens when you have a career in MMA, and then you just suddenly go to pro wrestling. And the, the main event, by the way, of this show, uh, I feel bad for this <sighs> crowd just because of how, like, how much is going on here? It's a sixty-minute time limit draw oh, between no. uh, Yuji Nagata and Chono. Yeah, oh, my. I just feel like they were so tired by the end of this. Yeah, it, that this is like drinking a Red Bull and then having to go to an office job. Yeah, going for the main <laughs> event. Hey, goddamn, that's messed up. <laughs> yeah, um, but that that um. Part of the way uh, that drop kick to double leg is so cool because of the fact that um, when he kicks him, uh, Kanemoto hits the ropes. Um, yeah. And so as he's rebounding, he gets him. And Jesus Christ, uh, the way Boz dives on him, because as soon as he secures the takedown, he just starts punching him in the sternum. Yes. And then rolls him up for yes. a pinfall. Yeah. And you could, I, I feel like as we've seen, the reason I wanted to do this chronologically um was because i feel like we're seeing like the evolution of man drawing we're from like f like walking <laughs> fish onto land to we finally approached upright man because the way he goes for ground and pound and then cradles the leg for a pinfall it's like he's fully adapted his style for pro wrestling 
Yes. Absolutely. He absolutely has figured it out by this time. Which is sad that it, he, by the time he figures it out, it's his last match. Because yeah. his body is actively falling apart. Well, yeah, one of his arms is completely atrophying. Um, yeah. So uh, we get, we get uh, Koji is downed. Um, boy, uh, uh, he just sort of taunts him because, as we know, the Dutch are inherently evil. Absolutely. And, and the final <laughs> striking sequence. Um, and uh, despite the fact that Koji slaps don't look like they're doing anything, I mm-hmm. actually think um, like the striking technique is good. Sam, yeah. you don't want to comment on that? Yeah, no, like I, I, I really like it because it's almost it is a it is a very um I, I dare I say it's a great it's a great example of fighting spirit in a wrestling match where Koji definitely looks like he's on his last legs. It's like, oh right, there's no way he's gonna come back from this now. But no, he has sure. that last bit of fighting spirit to really pull out uh the upset. Yes. And he does it he does it really well. That strike his striking's really s- solid and then he goes and grabs the heel hook, which gets and, it. Hell yeah. And, like, to do justice like, uh, to the sequence, what I love about it is so Koji's just sort of going left, right, left, right. Mm. Boz does some beautiful slips when he's trying mm. to set that up. Of He's mm-hmm. just like going into um, like bullet time mode. Um, and he rips. <laughs> he style. goes, something you'll see him do in real fights. He rips uh, left hook to the re- left hook to the liver, right hook to the head, and then goes for the head kick. And yeah. um, that's sort of what sets up the, um, that's like his tell that sets up the finish. Because as he goes for a second head kick, that's how Koji dives on it. Yeah. That's sweet. Hell yeah. And it's just, oh no, it's such a good finish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's super sweet. Ends with uh, a sweet leg bar. And, and that's what I mean by like the, the evolution of man we're seeing where uh, <laughs> now we get, oh, I don't know. Uh, would you two agree that like Boz Rudin healthy, uh, one of the biggest what ifs for pro wrestling? I would agree up there with like Kevin Randleman. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Bars has been on record as to saying he was once offered a contract with the WWE, and I think that must have been around 98, 99 time when Dan, yeah. Seven, and Ken were there. Well, yeah, I think battle. Well, I think that whereas, like, because uh, Ken, um, no offense, Ken Shamrock on like the talking has negative charisma. Oh, for um, real. <laughs> yeah. But this is very pride. Feel, it's real. I feel like Boz had <laughs> everything that like yeah. Vinnie Mac could want. He's got a crazy physique. Uh, he's got like the foreign heel, evil European guy thing going, <laughs> and he's like, I he could like. Um, there's someone uh, on Cage Match. I read a um, a uh, rating of uh, Mansoor um, that uh, let me let me find it. But I, I'm paraphrasing this for Boz. Um, uh, it says, uh, "I would follow this man a uh, man anywhere, off a cliff, into a cave, whatever." That's how I feel about Boz. <laughs> yes. uh, absolutely, without question. <laughs> I feel like if he had gone into an industry like a time period as hot as like Attitude Era, like I, he's not going to usurp a Rock or Austin, but I absolutely. feel like that guy could have owned the world. Absolutely, I think he would have been a really, really like higher mid card guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. That just puts on really fun. Like we- he would have had a banger with Vader. Yeah, if he, if Vader Absolutely. could could have such a good match with Ken Shamrock, holy shit! Well, for whatever reason, a match I would want to see just because of like the charisma of it is Boz Rutten versus The Rock. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! Well, just think about guys about um, like one of the X factors I think is makes some of my favorite pro wrestlers is physical charisma. Um, like body language wise, like that's mm. why I think um people, some people will get uh find it strange why I say like Timothy Thatcher is one of the most charismatic wrestlers ever. And what but I'm he has talking the funny about funny faces. Is, well, but I'm talking about like also his body language, like the way yeah. he does himself. Boz has that to a T, for um, sure. And I don't know. I just feel like he could. I think he would have been able to figure it out. He I absolutely mean, gets it mm. over time. And I think that's why he's so universally loved across the world as well. Um, and why he got so much success in Japan and why he got so much success in America and everywhere he's been is because 
People understand that. People, are, it's a universal language of like, understanding, like the charisma. Um, and man, that man had it in spades. It's yeah, you know, he's, he's across the world speaking in like his second and third languages in the case of yeah. like, English and Japanese, and mm -hmm. it, it carries over. I, I think it, when we're having this discussion, I think it's really funny looking at the picture of Boss Rutan doing modeling. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why, but it feels more profound when he's hitting that thinker taunt. I'm definitely <laughs> going to make that the uh, the uh, still image I use for this episode when it goes Absolutely. Up. Absolutely. <laughs> As I did the, um, the Yuji Nagata tokusatsu character for the one that went out yesterday. What is, like, nice. the ring gear for that? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, like... I haven't what? been able to find photographic evidence of it. I assume he was wearing a lion mask. That would have been nuts. A lion mat, like the Beast Morto style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You two have any closing thoughts you want to say about uh, Boz Root before we wrap her up? Gotta be like top 10, top 100 bald dudes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think he's top 5 bald dudes. Uh, I'd say that. That's fair. Yeah. We got oh. the, the, the Rock. Oh, absolutely. Top 5 bald dudes of all time. Top uh, top three best Dutch people of all time. <laughs> well, he doesn't have a lot of competition. No, he really doesn't. It, I think it's just him and Malachi Black, honestly, at this point. Yeah. And third is Dick Vitt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't amuse me, by the way. Of I think I said this on the uh, the Volcon episode, um, but it's like notorious that uh, like Japanese uh, promoters will change around like people's names. Um, because the Japanese audience has a hard time pronouncing them, but the Dick Fly they added an like an L in there, which would make it harder <laughs> yeah. to pronounce for the Japanese crowd, which is weird. <laughs> there is no L in Dick Vrit. Yeah, but the, it was <laughs> also V R I J I. Yeah, but you just make it sound like you're like you're uh, Tiger Mask being choked out by Fujiwara, and you basically. <laughs> no, yeah, <die>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a, absolutely as the um, the official Dutch correspondent for the Bachi Bachi Book Club, uh, one of my buddies um, has said Dutch is silly English, um, and then uh, like Afrikaans would be silly Dutch, which would mean even sillier English. Oh, so it's all. <laughs> oh, I've heard it. It's just all a matter of saying English words, but, like, you've been hit in the head a few times. <laughs> oh, so just how I normally speak. Got it. Yeah, exactly. Sweet. Well... well nothing else about, uh... Oh, Sam, you have anything about, uh, Boz Oh, Boz? man. Honestly, one of, just one of my favorite mixed martial artists. And I'm very glad we had to take a look at his pro wrestling career. Because, honestly, if it had gone the other way, I think he would have... Either way, he would have had a fruitful career. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, the um, part of me wonders is the fact that he never, because early on, um, they told him that something I think is adorable about Pancrase is that they basically said, uh, we're not going to ask you to do a work if you don't want to. Um, yes. And Boz wasn't comfortable with it. I do wonder if he had participated in works, whether he would have broken into it earlier. Yeah, I think so, honestly. Um, I just thought about this. Do you think Boz Rutan can cut a promo? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Well, what do you think, like, his, his fucking self-defense tapes are or whatever? Oh, like, for sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He, also, before uh, Pan Craze cards, he would sort of cut promos in Japanese. Oh, that's fun. Okay. Uh, later on into his run. Okay. Mm. Cool. Yeah, like, uh, you can, in one of his, by the way, everybody, check out Boz Rutten's YouTube channel if you have it already. Yes. It is legitimately awesome. Because, like, he also... Uh, he's still, he posted a video, like, yesterday. Um, he's That's still, awesome. um, he's still doing stuff. Uh, currently, he's doing a series, uh, it's called, uh, Lessons I've Learned from, uh, uh, Fights in Japan, where he's talking about, like, um, uh, like, sort of a retrospective about what he'd learned. Um, That's awesome. And, like, he, he does, like, sort of semi-regular podcasts where he's promoting, like, karate combat, which he commentates now. So, like, check out him commentating his fights at his YouTube channel. It's pretty awesome. Mm. Oh, yeah. We are uh, pro-Boss bo Rutten on this podcast. Always. And so always. as we as we sort of stop here, um, of course, everyone check out the bo uh, check out not the Bachi Bachi Book Club. You're listening to it. Uh, check out the Sweet <laughs> Chinwag podcast. Uh, yes. Sam's, 
Sam's podcast where maybe the Bocce Bocce boys are going to have an invasion angle. Stay tuned for that. No, uh -uh. looking, looking yeah. forward to it. A guy like me would never invade. Mm -hmm. I'm not British. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, there we go. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, other than that, um, have a. <laughs> oh, God. I no, no, I'm a so as uh, if anyone listening to the podcast know, I am a history major, uh, and currently I'm in the middle of writing a paper uh, on British imperial troops in World War One. So, oh my, that's, that, that's the headspace I'm in currently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing about a um, an Irish regiment serving, uh, like fighting at the Battle of Gallipoli while um the easter rising is happening oh so my. their friends their friends back like their friends and family back home are actively fighting the british empire while they're yeah. they're fighting for the british empire yeah my bad gang <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, i really yeah, about that that's it for this episode today uh everyone peace hopefully we'll have another one out next week bachi bachi for life all right there we go so we'll end the Craig call. Thank Get out of here, Craig. Much, oh, yeah. that was that that.